I'm losing, I'm losing volume up here, George. I was strong, but now I'm not. Help me out. So as we get ready to go to the Word of God, we are, uh, this is our first Sunday in the Lent season. Amen. Lent began on this past Wednesday. And we have a series of messages that we're going to bring to you uh, between now and uh, Palm Sunday and Resurrection Sunday. Amen. So uh, for the next several weeks, but over the next period of the next 40 days, 40 days Lent covers uh, the next 40 days uh, uh, Jesus' ministry before he goes to the cross. Sounding good, George. Thank you. Uh, we're going to bring you these series of messages. And today, uh, we're going to go uh, to the book of Mark, Gospel of Mark, chapter 1. And we're going to begin in verse number 12, now the verse number 15, if you will, uh, all over the sanctuary, to stand for the reading of God's word and as we, as we pray. Father, we thank you for this time and this season that you've allowed us to embark upon it. We pray, Father, that your presence will continue to abide in this place. We thank you for moving, oh God, even in the Sunday school hour, oh God. And we thank you for how you've already begun to set things in order. Father, we thank you that as we come, we pray in Jesus' name that you would forgive me of my sin. But as I stand, that I will not get in the way, but I would get out of the way and allow you to use me in Jesus' name, to be able to minister to your people, those that are in this sanctuary and those that may receive this message by way of recording and perhaps those that are watching via this live stream. Father, I give all the glory and honor unto you in Jesus' name. So, Father, I pray for your power to transcend right now in Jesus' name, to touch hearts and lives right where they are. Someone needs to hear a word from you. Someone needs to be restored and regenerated in their spirit, man. Do it for your glory, Father. Do it for your honor. In the name of Jesus, I pray right now for every vessel that is being used this day, for every prophet, for every apostle, for every pastor, for every teacher, for every evangelist, oh God, that is standing to preach your gospel in Jesus' name. I pray, Father, that you would use those men and women mightily, that souls will be saved in Jesus' name. This is my prayer, and I thank you, oh God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. In the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 1 and verse number 12. And the Word of God reads, Immediately the Spirit drove him into the wilderness. And he was there in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan, and was with the wild beast and the angels ministered to him. Now, after John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Verse number 12 and immediately. The Spirit drove him into the wilderness. I want to talk to you this morning in this series from this subject, A Time for Learning. A Time for Learning. You might be seated in the presence of our God. Beloved, when Jesus began his earthly ministry, uh, he took two steps in preparation. The first step, as we read in the scriptures, is that he was he was baptized. And then the second was uh, the temptation of Satan in the wilderness. And if you notice how the scripture reads, that after he was baptized, it says immediately he was led into the wilderness to be tempted of Satan. He was what baptized first. And then immediately led into the wilderness. You need to know and understand, beloved, that when you and I come to Christ, mm -hmm. 
that is a time when the enemy is going to surely come after you. Amen. Understand, it was not until the word of God lets us know that when he was baptized, that the enemy came after him. When you and I accept Christ into our lives, see, you got to understand that before you and I come to Christ, before you and I are baptized, our baptizing is a symbol of our immersion, uh, if you will, immersion being going down in the water uh, of of burying our sins and coming up anew. You do know and understand that when you come up anew, the devil wants you to stay old. That's right. Help me somebody. Right. So he's going to come at you in every way that he can. Mm -hmm. But you got to understand that even at his baptism, the word of God lets us know that, that there was a voice that came from heaven that said, you are my what beloved son in whom I am what well pleased. Understand, beloved, that a part of the wilderness, you and I, too, must go through a wilderness. Amen. Wilderness is a time for those of us that, you know, we're going to be tested to our limits. There are times that we're going to go through the wilderness, uh, the net, that uh, we're going to feel uh, agonizing. We're going to go through the wilderness, and there's going to be some difficult times. We're going to go through the wilderness where we're going to feel alone. We're going to feel abandoned. We're going to feel... We're going to feel uh, Desolate, we're going to feel like everything is dried up. Understand this this morning. But there is, uh, there, there's, there's something that's going to take place for us and through us if we allow ourselves to go through the wilderness experience. Yes. See, a lot can be learned, Deacon Sam, when we go in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. The wilderness can be a time watch this, of accelerated learning of our priorities in life. Mm. What are you talking about, Pastor? Let me help you understand. Have you ever gone to the grocery store mm. and uh, you had no uh, clear sense of what you were going to the grocery store for? Mm. And you went to the grocery store on an empty stomach. Oh, no. <laughs> Mm. I see I got some witnesses in here. Everything, neighbors, that you see in the grocery store, now all of a sudden you want it or you need it. Especially when you're hungry. And don't go to one of those grocery stores where they got the people in the aisles that's the testers. That they, they make it all kind of stuff. And you taste it. And, Ooh, that's a, how much is that? Oh, yeah, that's a good buy. And you find yourself, Tim, coming out of the grocery store with more sacks than you plan on coming out with. Amen. You never got what you intended to get when you went in there and talked to me somebody. Why? Because of your priorities weren't in line. You didn't lay them out. Help me this morning. Without, beloved, without a clear sense of what's most important, we can spend a lot of time doing hardly nothing and we haven't taken care of what's most important in our lives amen so so jesus's time in the wilderness him beginning to start his public ministry was a time for sorting out what mattered most and what was mostly clear to him what he needed to do in his life for the will of god you do know and understand that he came to this earth to fulfill the will of the Father. So, when he was, the scripture says, when he was led out into the wilderness, and I'm, I'm, y'all just stay with me in a minute, because when he was led out into the wilderness, when we look at Matthew and Mark's account, they tell us how Satan's temptation focused on three critical areas. The first one was the physical needs and its desires. When we look at it, and I, didn't, I don't have this uh, note for you, Daniel, so you don't have to worry about this, but when you look at Matthew chapter 4, in the, uh, the second verse, it tells us how it was that Satan says to Jesus, if you are the Son of God, and I'm, I'm going to talk about this in a minute, he says, command that these stones become what? Become bread. Mm -hmm. So now he's tempting him, or he's testing him in, in the area of his physical needs. Mind you, he's in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. Mm -hmm. 
Many of us can't go 40 minutes without having a meal. <laughs> let alone going 40 days. So you can imagine, and we don't know if, if, if the temptation came after the 40 days or it came during the 40 days. Nonetheless, the enemy came after Jesus. So you got to know and understand that in your life, in my life, no matter where you are in your walk, that the enemy is going to try to come after you. And he's going to attack you in some of these areas. And one of those areas is in the physical needs of our lives. The second area that he, the crucial area that he tried to attack was possessions and power. Mm -hmm. Here again, the word of God said, and if you are the son of God, this is Satan talking to Jesus, throw yourself down for it is written, he shall give his angels charge over you and in their hands they shall bear you up lest you dash your foot against a stone. Power. Mm -hmm. Then the third critical area was what? Pride. Satan comes and he shows him all the kingdoms of the world. And he said, all these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. You got to understand something, beloved. In this, in this portion of scripture, Satan can't give what don't belong to him. That's right. That's right. You've got to be mindful of who owns, listen, God owns the cattle on the thousand hills. Satan has no power, has no dominion over nothing. So when he tries to tell you this is what you can have if you worship him, you need to tell him saying you are a liar because it don't belong to you. So how can you get? How can you give me something that don't belong to you? It's like I, it's, 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 if I say to you, Tim, go ahead on over to Deacon Farrell's house. You can have it and live there. <laughs> I don't have the authority that he'll probably say, you come to, what pastor told you what? Right. <laughs> Did he tell you you can have the mortgage payments Amen. too? Amen. <laughs> Amen. It's not mine to give. Right. So Satan has no authority to give you anything because it doesn't belong to him. Jesus, beloved, was tempted to deviate himself from his mission. When you and I are tempted in our flesh, that is to deviate us from the mission that God has for our lives. Right. Scripture says that Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Understand this. The temptation or the test here is in the divine plan and purpose. All right? Jesus went into the wilderness under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. That's right. It says it in the scripture. He was led into the spirit by the Holy. He was led into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit to be tempted. He was there under the direct anointing of the Holy Spirit. Uh -huh. Are you seeing this? Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit, get this, may not always lead you beside the still waters. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. There's going to come a time in your life when you're uh, when you're not going to be in a comfortable place. All right. And that has been designed with the divine plan and the purpose over your life. Everything is not always going to be easy, beloved. Mm, that's right. But there's going to be some times, watch this, for the learning portion in our spiritual lives that you and I must go through a wilderness experience. Mm, if we had it easy all the time, Davis, then none of us would learn anything. Mm, but right. God has designed with his purpose in our lives. Listen, he says, I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Yes. Plans to bless you and what not to harm you. Amen. So the wilderness is not there to harm you. The wilderness is there to what? Bless you. Yes, right. Preach, Holy Spirit. Yes. You got to look at this. Listen, listen, listen. In Deuteronomy, here I go then. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 2 from the New Living Translation. This is what the Lord says to the children of Israel. Remember, remember how the Lord your God led you through the wilderness for these, what, 40 years, humbling you and testing you to prove your character and to find out whether or not you would obey his command. Are you seeing this in the word of God? Beloved, we too will be tested. And because we know that the testing will come, we should be alert and ready for that testing. The reason why we go through the wilderness is what? To humble us in the testing. All right? To prove our character. And to, listen, and, and ultimately to find out whether or not in the wilderness we're going to obey God's word or not. Because when we get into some sticky situations, we try to figure our way out of it on our own selves and not trusting God. 
So God said, listen, I'm going to allow you to go through this wilderness, but are you still going to trust in my word? Amen. Are you still going to believe that I will never leave you nor forsake you Amen. even while you're in the wilderness? Amen. Amen. Help me, Holy Spirit. So in Matthew chapter 4 and verse 1, then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. I said it on last week and I say it again on this week. Satan, beloved, is a fallen angel and he is real. He is not symbolic and he is constantly fighting against those who follow and obey God. I do need to say that one more time, Jordan. Satan is coming against those who follow and obey God. Who follow and obey God. If you are following God and if you are obeying God, see, it's one thing to follow, but then are you obeying him? When you begin to obey him in his word, then the enemy will come up against you. For those that ain't obeying God, say they fooling with you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And on this ain't a because this, you can read this book from sunup to sundown. But if you ain't obeying what's in it, Amen. Amen. he said, you ain't going to on read. Mm -hmm. Read all you want. And too often times in the body of Christ, that's what folk want to do. To appease their moral and spiritual conscience. I read the scriptures this week. <laughs> but did you obey them? Mm -hmm. mm, good question. Because the scripture says, love your enemies. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Now I want to say nothing. Amen. It says, do good to them that persecute you. Yeah. Pray, oh God, pray for them, Deacon S. Pharrell, that despitefully talk all kind of smack about you. Are you obeying the word? Amen. Are you obeying the word what it tells you to be, to be, to, to have, to have patience, kindness and meekness? When it tells you that we ought to have what the fruit of the Spirit living in our lives. Mm -hmm. But some of our fruit has fallen rotten from the tree. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. See, we can, we, can, we can read the word, but we don't want to obey the word. Mm -hmm. Help me, Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Satan will always tempt you in areas of your life that will first, get this, come against the word of God in your life. He's always trying to get us to do things his way or ours rather than God's way. But then second, here's what I want you to get. He wants you to, 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 to deny, watch this, your authority. He wants you to deny your authority. You must know, beloved, you must know who you are in Jesus Christ. Now, if you were here last week and you heard the woman of God preach last week, Dr. Chen said, what knowledge is what power? You have to know your authority in the kingdom of God and your authority over the enemy. Can I help you? Look at Acts chapter 19. Let's go there, Daniel. Acts chapter 19 and beginning at verse 11. I want to take my time with this real quick here. Acts 19 and 11. Now, God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul. So that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick and the diseases left them and the evil spirits went out of them. Then some of the itinerants, all right, Jewish uh, exorcists took it upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, We exercise you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. Let, let, now, let me help you understand this. That word itinerant in the, in the King James Version, is, is, and you'll see in the King James Version, is the word vagabond. And that word vagabond means it's a person who travels from place to place, or it's there are wanderers. So here it is, these itinerant, these these, these individuals that exercise uh, their, their so-called spiritual gifts were going around, and they were doing this going around making money. Y'all stay right there because I'm going to go somewhere with that. All right? In verse 14, all right, 
Also there were seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest, who did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus, I know. And Paul, I know. But who are you? Stay with me. These vagabond Jews were people who traveled from town to town, making a living, claiming to heal and cast out demons. Often they would recite a whole list of names in their incantations to be sure of including the right deity. Here they were trying to use Jesus' name in an effort to match Paul's power. Sound like anything that's going on in our society today? How you have a whole bunch of vagabonds on the TV, traveling from town to town, claiming that they're healing and casting out devils. In Jesus' name. Amen. But here it is. Mm. Help me, Holy Spirit. But they want to charge you for their healing. Making money. That ain't of God. That's why I keep telling y'all, be careful who you're watching. Be careful who you're listening to. You got these folk that's on television, and I, I don't care who I don't care who's listening to me. I don't care what you think. You got folk on television selling these these pieces of cloth and these pieces uh, and, and bottles of oil. And if you send them a certain amount of money, you're gonna be healed. The devil is alive. You are a vagabond. Amen. Amen. Trying to fleece the people of God in the name of Jesus. We gotta wake up, beloved. Then you got to note that there are some Ephesians that engage in this exorcism and occult practices for profit. So when you see this, the, the, the sons of Skeezer, the sons of Skeezer were impressed by Paul, whose power to cast out demons came from God's Holy Spirit, not from witchcraft. So, so you got to understand, beloved, you and I cannot duplicate God's power. Amen. Amen. These men were calling upon the name of Jesus without knowing Jesus himself personally. There are many that will call on the name of Jesus. Jesus said it even himself, that when, when the time comes, all right, there will be those that say, God, did we not cast out demons in your name? Did we not heal the sick in your name? And the Bible says, Jesus will say, depart from me. I never knew you. Just because you call him Jesus, 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 don't mean that you know him. Amen. 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 But you got to understand, beloved, you got to know the authority that lies within you. And you know this authority when you go through your wilderness experience. These are one of the things that you learn. You learn who you are in Christ Jesus. Because watch this. Get this. Get this. Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 through 5. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, as God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Get this. And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat of eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, you shall not what? Surely die. Understand that the enemy will always lie and give you half truths. If God said that if you're going to eat it, you're going to die, then that's what God meant. Yeah. You eat it, you're going to die. Yeah. All right? But look at what Satan, look how Satan twists this. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be what? Like God, knowing good and evil. Beloved, you got to know your authority. Why would they get duped into to, to being like God when they were created in the image and likeness of God? So why fall for this trick? Why? Because they did not know their authority. You and I must know our authority. You got to know your authority. Beloved, Satan tempts us when we are vulnerable, when we're under physical and emotional stress. 
All right? When we're trying to weigh out some big decisions, when we're faced with some uncertainties, and as we follow Jesus into the wilderness, we can see that our wilderness time can be an important time of testing our values, looking at what is most important and making decisions about our lives' priorities. Understand, beloved, in the past few weeks, months, years, here in the ministry, many of us have gone through some wilderness experiences that have tested our values and most of all have tested our life's priorities. When I look at my brother, Deacon Pharrell, thank God that he's here with us on today. But he's been dealing with some ailments in his body for the past, what, three weeks? Seems like four months. It seems like a month now. Now watch this. In his personal wilderness experience, he has to learn how to align his priorities with the word of God. And let me, let me help you understand this too. That when he goes through the wilderness, his wife and family goes through that wilderness too. Amen. Amen. So the entire family has to align themselves with the priorities and the plan that God has in store for that family. Understand that your wilderness experience when the Holy Spirit takes you through your wilderness is not just for you, beloved, but it's for those that are aligned in your life. Everybody that's in your life can experience the wilderness like you can because everybody has not been aligned in your life. I said this before and I say it again. You can't keep putting people in your life that God has not intended for them to be there. Stop trying to make everybody your friend when God has said they're not your friend. That as a matter of fact, they may be your enemy instead of your yes. friend. Amen. Amen. But we want to call everybody friend. Mm. Mm -mm. I like it the way we said back in Philly. That's my homie. Mm -hmm. There's a difference. Homie is a person that's born in the same hometown. Mm -hmm. That don't mean he's my friend. Mm -hmm. I can call you homie all day long. Mm -hmm. What's up, home skillet? <laughs> But that don't mean you my friend. Amen. We just grew up together. We grew up from the same block. We might have went to the same school. But that don't mean you my friend. You just my homie. North Philadelphia, you're born and raised. Or the playgrounds is where we spend most of our time. <laughs> Beloved, listen, listen. It's during these times of testing that we begin to learn some things about ourselves, some real important things. Now, I, I can imagine, I can imagine what my brother has been going through. And I, like I said, I can only imagine, just from talking to him and, and, and the physical things that's going through and, and with his wife, I can only imagine what they're experiencing. But I can also imagine him in his quiet time. I can also imagine her in her quiet time. Father, and we've, we've talked, you know, but Father, you know, the doctors may not have the solution. They may can't figure it out. But Father, you know. Yeah. So while we're in this wilderness, my priority is to keep my eyes on you. Yeah. Amen. Keep my, we're going to stay focused on you. Richard's life is in your hand. Yeah. Many of you have been going through these experiences in your life and you don't understand why. Just know and trust God that whatever you're dealing with, your life is in his hand. Yeah. The wilderness is a time for you to learn the purpose and the plan for God's for for God, for, for for Him over your life. Amen. Wilderness experiences, beloved, can be painful, but understand that that pain it yields a spiritual growth in your life. It's just like George. It's just like me. Y'all, I've been I've been going to this gym faithfully. I've been going to this gym, and, and I kind of see some results. They're not the results. They're not the results I want to see. I want to be bigger. I want to be. I want to be. But I see some. But Deacon Rich, the pain yields a profitable result. Even right now, I have so much pain in my right elbow. It's unbelievable. Because I call, I, I, I got to get bigger. I got to get bigger. So tell them, in order to get bigger, I got to do what? More I got to work. And what somebody said? More weights. More so I got to lift more weights. So I done up my, 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 my dumbbell weight 
And I done upped it and I'm pressing and I pressed the other day and my elbow say, stop pressing. <laughs> I dropped that thing. I said, oh my God. But watch this. Okay. I control the weight. You can control with the help of the Holy Spirit the weight that you're dealing with in the wilderness. And watch this. He will not put any more on you than you can bear. Amen. And I may not have, I may not need to go up anymore in weight. I just need to maintain what I got to continue to build up what I'm trying to build up. The Lord may put on you a little more weight, but guess what? It's going to build you up to where you need to be in your spiritual walk with him. But that's what he does for us in the wilderness. So guess what? I'm, I'm done. Listen. Your wilderness, beloved, is a time of learning. It's a time of learning. So get that first principle as we go through these weeks of, of Lent. That the first thing you got to do is understand your time of learning. The first thing that Jesus went through when he started his ministry was he went through the wilderness. God has called you into a work. And you may go through that wilderness before the work begins. But understand, before he allows you to go through the work and begin the work, he's going to prepare you in the wilderness. Thank you, Father. 